Water is a crucial issue in the state of California. Over the past couple of months in the state, we've had a series of storms that have brought in a lot of rain and snowfall. We've seen floods. It's caused a lot of problems. But over the past five years, we've been in a historic drought. We've gone from way too little water to way too much. It is really a feast or famine at the moment with the water on the ground. One of the biggest issues of the state is thinking about a changing climate. We're expected not just to see temperature changes, but changes in the extremes. So this feast or famine of water will continue and in fact, will likely get worse. One of the largest markets in the drone industry is expected to be agriculture, to make very rapid management decisions and improve how we grow food and the future of food production really on the planet. You want to get the mapping started first? Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. With an exploding global population and pressures of climate change, food security is one of the biggest problems the world faces now and in the future. Greg Krutzinger is an ecology PhD and scientific program director specializing in the development of drone agriculture. Greg works daily with struggling farmers to find innovative uses for drone technology as a critical tool in the future of farming. So this is the EB Sequoia, so it's built just for this uh, specific camera. Uh, and it can map 400 to 500 acres on a battery. So it's really powerful for mapping huge agricultural lands. We have a small lightweight camera. It's about the size of a, a GoPro, uh, as well as the light sensor here. So that collects the light data that's beaming down to the plants. And then we can collect the amount of light coming off the plants. Normally, a regular camera captures visible spectrum to make a color picture that we can see visibly. Well, plants don't have eyes, they have chlorophyll uh, that they absorb for photosynthesis. Parrot makes the world's uh, smallest multispectral camera. So this has different bands for capturing different wavelengths of light. And by taking ratios of those, we can determine the greenness and also uh, the health of a leaf or a, or a plant. And so by mapping with a plant camera, we can get a whole map of plant health out in the field and plant productivity. I'm just going to shake the drone three times. It'll start the motor uh, and I'll throw it in the air. Right now, the drone is flying along a grid pattern and that grid pattern was automatically calculated by the drone so it's basically making a map by taking pictures so that the photos can overlap by 80%. And then we'll stitch those pictures together into a really precise map. So I can watch as the drone is moving and I can see the drone up in the air and you can hear that it's taking pictures. So every time it clicks, I know the drone's working. That's a pretty reassuring sound. We can take a field and we can digitize it. And then we can divide the field into different categories. Then we can assign those categories to different levels of fertilizer, high, medium, and low, or different levels of irrigation or pesticide. And we can take a thumb drive containing that map and plug it into a smart tractor uh, or a smart sprayer. And it's just gonna spray those pixels that we assigned at a, a given category. So it's a very precise way of managing your fields. This is a robot that can measure everything automatically and do it again and again and again. So the repeatability is very appealing to a scientist. Two years ago, I was a professor. As a field ecologist, you spend a lot of time out in the field doing very tedious measurements by hand, usually with calipers and rulers and little squares you drop down onto the ground and count everything. And so I was interested in drones to see if I could save time for measuring the phenotype of a plant or how it, how it looks. I thought that the imagery would help me uh, speed up the research I was doing. 
In 2014, we were still at the stage of the drone industry where we were duct taping cameras on the bottom of things that flew okay. I started to really get into imagery and what imagery could do for, for surveying remotely. And so that path really led me down a rabbit hole of, of drone technology. Uh, and that's when I became hooked and thought about a career in the drone industry. I'm a scientist at heart, and I knew we would change science. The folks that we work with on a daily basis are worried about not just the average change over time, uh, but really these extreme events. So uh, a flood today or a drought tomorrow, uh, and, and those are expected to increase over time uh, as the climate shifts. So how do you deal with an environment as a farmer that is unpredictable? And how do we think about managing in an environment that's fairly stochastic and bringing up a, a level of nervousness of not being able to predict uh, what the next growing season is going to bring. We raise bell peppers for processing, jalapenos, wax peppers, and then we raise tomatoes for fresh market for damari. We raise garlic for fresh market. Basically, the creek encroached on the, my farmland, and the field that I was farming is the creek. You can't walk down there to actually look close to where the water is. So we're out here, we're gonna scout an area that has been flooded and fly over the area, area that we wanna map uh, and just get some eyes in the sky. I've put the phone in the goggles, uh -huh. uh, and that is easier to see in real time. Yeah, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm following the flow of the water to see where exactly it went. With Dan, those fields are ready to plant. So rather than hiring a survey company to come in, we were able to come in and uh, fly and map his entire field in about 20 minutes and we'll give him very precise measurements of the area that he can plant uh, for this coming growing season and an assessment of how much he's lost permanently due to the creek changing its banks. Where the flooding is where I couldn't get to, it's a larger area than I originally thought. It's roughly a 10 to 12 acres. I had no idea how big of an area it was. It should allow me to make a decision as to what I can do a lot sooner while I have the time now before we get into the busy farming season. This is the flight uh, over your field. Mm -hmm. And each of those red dots is a picture that was taken. You would divide up the field into maybe five different categories mm -hmm. of low to high spray or a certain amount of spray. Right. And you would just create a grid of pixels and just spray those particular pixels with that treatment. The future is really about change detection. How do we automate the process of collecting data, but also automate the process of analyzing the data? So you're not just looking at an individual map, so you can detect hot spots and cold spots, uh, and you can go and, and react to those hot spots and cold spots uh, very quickly. So it's not just about the average map, it's about putting all the maps together uh, so you can really detect problems uh, before they get out of control. The world is facing unprecedented challenges when it comes to the future of food. We need to use every tool at hand uh, to create a solution for farms. So whether that's satellite data, whether it's weather data, sensors in the ground, drones flying over and capturing data with imagery, putting these different streams of data together to make very informed decisions, not just at one time point, uh, but over the entire growing season or the entire year, is really the future of, of agriculture. You know, the way to think about drones is really as flying smartphones. We're going from the drone to the phone, to direct to the cloud, and then back again. Really, the future is not the drone, it's the incredible stream of data uh, that's passing from the drone. And what do you do with all those data? That's the real challenge of the drone industry. But whether it shapes the future of agriculture is really up to the farmers and, and up to the decision makers uh, to take those data and use them in an educated way. It's a whole new, whole new world. <laughs>